Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Snoop Dogg, Tom Segura, and music from Mammoth WVH with Cleto and the Cletones. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! I just, I just made my way from my office to the stage, and it has never smelled more like pot in any, it smelled good. any building. Any like, I'm, there are like there are grow rooms that smell less like pot than this, and it makes no sense because the joint is like what? Like it's like the size of like maybe the ring finger tops. It's the whole damn place. Do you guys smell it? Uh, the reason I assume I don't want to jump to conclusions, but the gin to my juice Snoop Dogg is here tonight. And... Will somebody go tell Snoop Dogg he's here tonight? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Guillermo, did you visit Snoop in his room before the show? No, Jimmy, I'm a scare. Really? Yeah. Because <laughs> I can just barely see your eyes tonight. Why is that? No, Jimmy, last time I went, it took me two, two days to be normal. So this time I passed. Are you, are you telling me because I'm seeing a glint? Even your mustache is bloodshot right now. It's like... <laughs> No, maybe the tequila, but this time... Ah, yeah. your old friend tequila is responsible. Well, I do want to start the show by congratulating Donald Trump for winning his primary election in New Hampshire last night. No applause? <laughs> <laughs> he won by 11 points. He beat uh, Nikki Haley by double digits. He's also leading Nikki Haley uh, by double digits in felony charges, 91 to 0. <laughs> but Nikki Haley has no... Plans to stop. She will not drop out. Last night, she told her supporters that the race is far from over. She has still has literally dozens of states to lose before she... <laughs> and she reminded her fans that Donnering Donald doesn't seem to know that she isn't Nancy Pelosi. The other day, Donald Trump accused me of not providing security at the Capitol on January 6th. <laughs> No, I've long called for mental competency tests for politicians over the age of 75. <laughs> Trump claims he'd do better than me in one of those tests. Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. But if he thinks that, then he should have no problem standing on a debate stage with me. No. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna stop you right there because you are missing the point, Nikki. He said he would crush you in a mental competency test. All you need to do is say, okay. No one wants to watch you debate him. We want to see him take this test. We want to watch Donald Trump sitting with paper and a pencil, a number two pencil, trying to figure out which one is a rectangle and which is a square, okay? That's what we want. Why is this so difficult to understand? You want to win or you want to finish second 54 more times in a row? It was party night in Magaland last night. All the spokes monsters were out in force, including somebody that we haven't seen for quite some time. Last point. This is a democracy, a constitutional republic. We must respect the will of the people. And Nikki Haley can't become an election denier. She's been rejected. Mm. She can say tonight she came in second, or you can say she came in last. Ooh. <laughs> Look who climbed out of the grave and... Uh... I have to admit, I kind of miss that bleach blonde she demon blowing her vape smoke <laughs> up Trump's burnt orange crevice at every minute. I think Trump tonight will continue to be very gracious. Uh, if people say, people say, oh, he insults this one, he's been incredibly gracious um, to Ron DeSantis, even to Nikki Haley. He's been incredibly gracious. <laughs> he's full of graciousness. He's 15 minutes after they called the race in his favor, Dorian Gracious posted, Haley said she had to win in New Hampshire. She didn't. Delusional. She came in third last week. She just lost Nevada, which is up next. 
We just won Nevada. <laughs> Nikki came in last, not second. A very bad night for Nikki Birdbrain Haley. That is, I mean, if that isn't incredibly gracious, I don't know what is. <laughs> Trump was visibly upset that Nikki Haley gave a speech as, as if she won. He reportedly spent the night seething about it. And I don't blame him, really. Pretending you won when you actually lost, it's his thing. You can't, <laughs> not cool, Nikki. And I, by the way, if I were Nikki Haley, not only would I do what Trump does and claim I won, I would tell everyone he can't be president because he was born in Kenya or something. I'd be like, <laughs> where's the birth certificate, Kunta Dante? <laughs> Donald Trump seemed to be the only one who was unhappy last night as the stars of the MAGAverse descended to party in New Hampshire, stars including the Klan mom herself. Tonight, Nikki Haley was defeated. The problem is she's gonna be dumb enough and she's gonna be a fake candidate and she's gonna keep going and we are going to destroy her in South Carolina. It's gonna be a, com a complete humiliation. I can't wait to see it happen. It's always inspiring to see women supporting other women. I think that's, <laughs> that's what we learned from Barbie, wasn't it? <laughs> was, was she drunk? Was that little goblin drinking the blood alcohol content of a leprechaun again? I'm being told he wanted 803 officially, 803. <laughs> it's hilarious. Nikki Haley is such a joke. I mean, this primary is over with, so we can officially say the Biden-Harris campaign has dementia just like the president. They forgot to put him on the ballot and their voters are having to write it in, and he's losing. Joe Biden is losing the write-in here in New Hampshire. You can't say anything more pathetic Actually, than that. I can't make that up. Will Jimmy Kimmel write about that tomorrow <laughs> night on his, on his show? Uh, it's just great stuff. Well, I write about it. What do you mean, write about it? I mean, don't get me wrong. I appreciate the shout-out, but I write about it. This isn't a newsletter. <laughs> it's a television show. Anyway, it's worth mentioning that Biden won New Hampshire as a write-in. He got 55% of the vote. Trump got... 54% of the vote, which is less. And it's also worth mentioning that Marge T. Green either is or was dating that reporter she was talking to. And who could blame him? She seems great. She's really... <laughs> she's got more loose bolts than a Boeing 737. <laughs> Thank you. You know, um... You know who else made an appearance at the Trump New Hampshire watch party? The fabulously disgraced former Congressman George Santos. Did they invite you here tonight? No, I came. It's an open event. It's a public event. I just registered and came. I had came, came to have fun. It's MAGA time, baby. It's 2024. Yeah, well, it looks like somebody's gunning for a pardon, huh? <laughs> Trump must hate him so much. He must be. I, I looked all over the internet for a picture of them together. There are none. There are no pictures. Trump has who knows how many photos with Jeffrey Epstein. George Santos, he's like, you stay over there, okay? <laughs> More than 1,000 people have uh, been arrested now in connection with the insurrection that happened after the last presidential election. And some of the good folks who stormed the Capitol are complaining that it's affecting their travel plans. <laughs> They claim that whenever they fly now, they get held up by airport security, which I don't know, kind of makes sense. Remember what happened last time he got past security? It was bad. <laughs> of course, it takes more time if you're an insurrectionist to get through the TS. You have to take off your face paint, your Viking helmet, <laughs> your raccoon pelt, your sword from Party City. It's a whole thing. I tend to think that if you... Overthrow the government, having to take the bus for the rest of your life is a pretty fair punishment, you know? <laughs> but for those who prefer to fly, help is on the way. For those involved in a violent and treasonous attack on democracy, <laughs> air travel can leave you feeling grounded. <laughs> Introducing Patriot Air. Kick off your camouflage Crocs and settle for an insurrection-friendly ride with top-notch in-flight entertainment. Bill Gates is good. I, I'm a liberal. I love Bill Gates. Gourmet gas station cuisine. Generous overhead space for your open carry carry-ons. <coughs> and non-stop service to dozens of locations all over the flat earth. <laughs> Patriot Air knows flying can be stressful, especially if you once roped the guys in your snowmobile club into trying to kidnap the governor of Michigan. I have a lapse in judgment. Patriot Air believes in second chances. That's why 100% of our pilots are also registered sex offenders. <laughs> when you love your country enough to violently attack it. <laughs> Patriot Air, the only planes with truck nuts.
You know, Americans aren't the only ones worried about Trump forcing his way back into the White House. The Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, seems to be losing a bit of sleep over it, too. Obviously, uh, Mr. Trump uh, represents a certain amount of, uh, of unpredictability, uh, but uh, we uh, will make sure we're pulling together and preparing for whatever eventualities. <laughs> eventualities. Well, that's a nice Canadian way of putting it, eventualities. Meanwhile, he's like Jamie Lee Curtis waiting for Michael Myers to come back. <laughs> How do you even, how does Canada prepare for Trump anyway? Do all the Arby's in Ottawa turn the lights off and pretend no one's home? I mean, <laughs> I get why he's worried. You know, Trump floated the idea of firing missiles into Mexico to stop the drug cartels. I would imagine Justin Trudeau has got to be thinking, you know, what if he holds the map upside down? I mean, <laughs> he holds it like he held that Bible, could be light suit for the Canadian. <laughs> Poor Canada, it must be like living in an apartment over a crack house. How funny would it be if they build a wall to keep us out, right? <laughs> and this is an especially complicated scenario for me because I am, for those who watch the show regularly know, I am the mayor of a Canadian town. Back in 2019, I was either named or named myself. I don't remember what happened, but I'm the honorary mayor of a real town named Dildo. And so if you hear somebody call me the mayor of Dildo, it's not an insult, it's my job. And, you know, I assumed I would be mayor for life, but recently, uh, some random guy I've never heard of, his name is Todd Cole, tagged me on Instagram with the following message. He wrote, hey, Jimmy Kimmel, I will run against you for the mayor of Dildo. <laughs> hashtag great beer, hashtag beautiful place, which is a guy named Todd is trying to... My dog is named Todd, and this guy... <laughs> thinks he can unseat me. And you know, some people, they might think it's, oh, it's a joke. That's not how I operate. I take my dildo duty seriously. <laughs> and if this punk wants to come at me, he should know I'm well-funded. I am uh, vindictive as all get out. <laughs> I will do whatever I have to to destroy him. And I'm watching his every move. Hello, my fellow dildoans. It's me, your honorary mayor, Jimmy Kimmel. Since you opened your arms to me back in 2019, Dildo has been humming. The town of Dildo experienced an incredible tourism boom. Median income is up 17%, crime is down, and our community is growing. Just recently, we welcomed four beautiful new Dilditos, Ella, Colby, Matthew, and James. I think we know who he's named after. Folks in Dildo have been so thrilled on Mayor, they can't seem to keep their hands off each other. But now, an outsider named Todd Cole wants to change that. Who is Todd Cole? Todd lives in Ontario and, from what I can tell, spends most of his time in the woods, probably drenched in deer urine from head to toe. <laughs> Todd owns and operates a sign rental company that uses illegal dog labor to do spell check. Well, guess how that turned out? Eldery care? Huh. Todd Cole doesn't care about spelling or our golden seniors. That's why Todd and his illiterate dog have no place in Dildo. For the past four years, I've been hard at work rebuilding Dildo to be a community of dreams. While Todd is busy posting inspirational quotes from known Canada hater Tom Hanks and pushing his recipe for crockpot moonshine on Pinterest. Unfortunately for Todd, it's illegal to make moonshine in Canada without a license. Matter of fact, for a guy who wants to be mayor, Todd Cole doesn't seem to have a clue about the law. If he'd even bothered to read the Newfoundland and Labrador Urban and Rural Planning Act of 2000, Chapter U8, Part 4, Section 36, Subsection 2C, he'd know that the mayor of Dildo has the power to prohibit signage. And guess what? That mayor is me. Todd Cole won't be putting his dumb signs in our town, not now, not ever. I installed the only sign in this town that matters. So when you go to the polls, Dildo, tell Todd Cole to stick it up as you know where. And thanks for making me your mayor. <laughs> Who are these kids? I be Captain Dildo, and I approve of this message, because Todd Cole's trying to steal me f***ing look. Oh.